My name is Matt, and you guys will remember that I introduced the channel to my new BMW M340i a couple of months ago, and one of the main rivals and contenders to what I would have bought is right here next to us, is the Lexus IS500, and we're here at Road America's Motorplex, because we're going to shake these two down and see if I made the right decision. Just no grip. No front end, no front end. Okay. Ah! Windshield wipers! I'm really, really kind of at the limit of this car. I've just front end push. And then rear end complaining on corner exit. See no turn in, no front end. Okay, focus, focus. Miss the apex, hit this one. On power, on power, on power. Braking here. Okay, switching to manual. Okay, on to brakes. Good. Good braking. Decent front end. Okay. Feels heavy. Ooh, downhill braking, a little squirrely. Good power out of the corner though. Manual is definitely the way you want to do it. The, ge the gearbox is really the hamstring here. Even in slow manual mode, it's still better than in automatic. Oh yeah, this is fun. This is a fun car. This is a fun car. Okay, and last lap we're gonna stay in manual. No lift. Oh, here we go. Oh, brakes getting long. Brakes getting long into turn one. Come on here, big brakes. Oh, come on. Turn. You big heavy thing. Downhill braking. Good. Love the NA engine. Super predictable power. Super predictable power. Good delivery. And it sounds great too. Oh yeah. This is gonna feel faster. Not if I mess up this last section, though. Okay. All How right. about those skinny tires? Wow. So we're just gonna start there. <laughs> just, let's just get it out. Let's just get it out the way. I wrote a roast of your of your tires. I believe it. Oh, I have no. five. No, I don't want to hear no. it. <laughs> I can't hear much more of this. Okay. So at this point, are you texting in the video? Just give me one second. Just give me one second. 
Hang on. He's literally writing jokes about my tires right now. Why did the performance car switch to narrow tires? Because it wanted to slim down for the race, but now it just feels tired and deflated. That's pretty good. Feels like a long walk <laughs> for a short drink of water. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I feel like that's like eight jokes wrapped in one. All right, so at this point now, they have seen both cars on track. They've set lap times. What were the results? I think both of these were your times as well. Because no. you were... Oh, me driving? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. you were a bit faster than I was. Um, for the IS500, we had a 102.24, and the M340, we had a 103.38. So this, on a tighter autocross course, mm -hmm. is full... just about a second more. Yeah. A second slower. More than a second slower. Yes. And what does it come down to? It comes down to your... <laughs> So your understeering and your small wheels that you got here. The yes. narrow the narrow yes. tires that you have on here. So this has uh, 265s in the back and 235s on the front. Does it really have 265s in the back? Mm-hmm. Um, so a, a good amount of tread. Oh my God, yeah, okay. The M340 has, it's a square setup, so it's 225 all around. This is staggered, the IS500. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess if we wanted to, you want to like just kind of talk through some of the components of it and then we can talk about how it felt? Yeah, I think just my general feelings on the Lexus were I, on the track is where that engine kind of shines from a sound perspective on the street. It's very quiet, it's muted, but there you can really get to the upper half and then enjoy the sound. It's really predictable power. So coming out of a corner, I know exactly how it's going to behave, but it doesn't feel as quick as the BMW. It feels like it has more power, but it doesn't feel as quick, as nimble. It feels heavier, a little bit more cumbersome. But since there's so much more tire, I wasn't struggling for grip on corner entry, and I wasn't oversteering on corner exit. Like, that is a lot of fun. That was more fun on track than I thought it was gonna be. This thing was less fun on track than I thought it was gonna be, and it really comes down to two things, and it is tires, mostly, and also brakes. I think when I have the Kumho's go on, I'm gonna have them take a look at the brakes here too, just to see, cause I did not feel like I had the stopping power. And granted I went right after your hot laps, uh, so maybe they were warm, but I didn't think that I had the initial brake bite that I was expecting to get from this car. But yes, initial corner steer, or initial corner entry understeer, and then corner exit oversteer. So it was just sloppy mess. <laughs> and yeah. it was really tires. What, what did you think? What was your takeaways? Yeah, I mean, I. it's interesting cause we have kind of different points of view on it. I thought that the Lexus definitely had more grips, grip in the corner, so it felt better there. Um, but it definitely felt heavier than the M340i, more yeah, like sluggish, did. even though it has more power. But you said that this felt more powerful. I actually had the opposite, I guess, experience. And we even tested it. Like your car is faster. Yeah. The 60. only place that this felt more powerful is on the front straight. After the oh bend, I can keep pulling a little bit. This feels way quicker out of a corner. The turbo spool, you've got torque. Yeah. This feels quicker. It's just when we're gonna get, like if we were to take it on the, the big track, the Road America track, this thing would, would do well on the straights because it's got like 75 more horsepower. But this thing does feel quick and lighter and more balanced. Yeah, and it's just like more nimble, I would say. And it, it felt to me, the M340 just felt more like track ready. Um, although there was just, just loads of understeer. I mean, your tires were squealing the whole time we were going around the track. Yeah, I mean, into turn one on the first lap, it was just yelling. Yeah. It was not happy there. But I think with the new tires going on, obviously we'll set a new time. And I think with new tires and getting brakes checked, it's faster than this thing. Yeah, we'll have to see. We shall see. But then let's talk about how it is on, uh, I guess, styling. Let's talk styling and then we'll talk about the on-road, like casual driving experience. What do you think looks better? I think that the IS500 looks better. I also think the IS500 looks better. Yeah. This is a mean looking car. The thing that gets me, and we talked about it on the phone, is this, from an exterior perspective, is the launch edition. It's the incognito yeah. gray. <laughs> With the with the the BBS forged wheels the or whatever red interior. they are, but the launch spec had a black interior with Alcantara and like a little plaque. Yeah. This has red interior. And no but plaque. But for those of you that like red interior, you basically have a launch edition car now without having to pay launch edition prices. Right. Yeah. It maybe will be less collectible in the future, but I think I mean this thing looks fabulous. Yeah, I think the the, the styling is subtle, but it's still a bit aggressive in certain spots like i mean when you catch like certain angles of this car like specifically the hood and stuff like these 
nice wavy bulges. Like yeah. it just, it looks really good and mean. And I think it's a really good color combination as well. Yeah, I think the only differences between this and an IS350 are three inches taller in the hood for mm -hmm. the for the engine, and then the quad tips. The quad tips That's yeah. it. That's yep. like the only difference. I and mean, I kind of love that it's so sleeper, and it does still look so Lexus. Yeah, and I, I just think the IS is just a good looking vehicle to be yeah. with. Yeah. Um, this, it's a three series. We talked about it in previous videos. It's a nice spec. I love the spec, but it's common. Mm -hmm. Love the, yeah, whatever. So um, let's talk about the way it drives just casually on the road. Do you have a favorite? Yeah, this is the would, easiest but, point yeah, ever awarded. But between like these two cars, how they're spec today, the Lexus for sure. I actually yeah. think this is kind of where it shines. Um, 100%. Like the ride is so great. The cabin refinement is good. The noise insulation is really good. The seats are so comfortable. The um, like the chassis balance and suspension balance. I think they did a really good job of kind of being a tweener between comfort. Yeah. and like sporty aggressiveness um like it just like we took it for the weekend um you know, like 200 mile round trip and like it was just lovely to drive no yeah. no like drone on the highway no cabin noise like the lane keep assist is actually pretty good in this thing i mean yeah. not not amazing but um it's pretty good i mean this thing is just so much better to drive compared to yours it's like <laughs> it is literally polar opposite no it is i think in the thing current that, specs yeah no the thing that gets me is like this to me feels like a luxury car first that just happens to have a big v8 in right. it right yeah and this is kind of constantly reminding you that it's more on the sporty side of things mm -hmm. it wants you to drive it hard it wants you to attack a corner it wants you to rev it out this is perfectly ha i mean it's and it comes down to the way the gearbox is tuned we'll talk gearbox later but like even in sport plus it's like nope we're going to shift at like 3000 4000 rpm yeah and it's going to be quiet and it's going to be comfortable and it's going to be great and right. it is so on the road I'll have that every single day. Yeah. Every single day. Uh, what's next? Trunk space. They're kind Lex of the same. I think the Lexus might have a slight. Yeah. If it's if it's got a, a an advantage, it's slight. They're both they're both really good though. Um, I feel like Lexus is actually pretty like known for having good trunk space. Even yeah. like the GS. I know that's bigger, but yeah, they've like always just had really good trunk space. Can't get power opening trunk though. No. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, that is kind on of On a Lexus. Odd. But the way that the trunk opens is like a perfect rectangle. Like, mm -hmm. it's super easy to get stuff in. The only thing is, I opened it one time this week, and there was a spider in there. So I have to say that it has a worse trunk now. Because 100% <laughs> of the time I open the trunk, it has a spider in it. <laughs> um, OK, what's next? Rear seats. Rear seats. BMW. I, yeah, Lexus is a bit smaller there. And I think that really comes down to like a product of the age. It's an older car, older chassis. Yeah. All of the newer cars have gotten bigger, longer, wider every year. Right. So this thing, whenever it gets updated, if it gets updated, I'm sure it'll be then it'll be more, more competitive yeah. to this. But yeah, the BMW is bigger. Interiors, look and feel, materials. Yeah, Obvious. I think as in <laughs> like current spec, Lexus. It's not like it doesn't feel as special in there as like the LC500, but. Right. But it it's definitely a good place to be like you feel i mean just some materials like yeah it's kind of dated it's way more dated than the m340 but the materials are just like so great all the buttons that you interact with everything you touch is just lexus tier quality it's really really good yeah no i totally agree and i even think if you like this obviously has like the sensatec pleather vinyl whatever even if you go up to the vernasca like the nicer leather like i drove an x5 with the vernasca it's nice Mm -hmm. But I still think the leather quality on Lexus cars are just, it's just that little half step yeah. above. It's its a great interior. Like to just sit and be in a luxury car, that's it right there. And I, I love the red and I feel like I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge like color color yeah. guy, especially on an interior. But yeah, like this kind of, hard with the red. this kind of speaks to me. Like it's yeah. a really good tone red. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. Um, oh, you can also get cool seats in this. Yeah. And they work really well. That's huge. And they're nice. That's going to be huge, especially now that it's getting nicer. Right, yeah. This is going to be Thank you, tough on my lower back. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, technology, pretty clear, probably. Yeah, I think the BMW yeah. has basically everything and more. The weird thing on this one, okay, so a couple weird things. No head-up display. Yep. No wireless charger. Yep. And a CD player. Yeah. When's the last time you put, like, when was the last time, think about it now, when's the last time you played a CD? This is like pre line wire area. Really, you played a CD in yeah, college? Yeah, in my Jeep, in the Cherokee I had. Oh, okay, so that was out of force. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> not like I wanted. I didn't, I didn't necessarily <laughs> want to play a CD, but I found like an old mix yeah. from high school. Um, it made me think back to like when we were in high school and we would have like the cassette to aux adapters. Right. 
And that was like, like we had that after CD players. So the fact that this still has a CD player is like so many generations old, but it's classic Lexus stuff. I think the one issue I had though, is like the USBs weren't working for me. And then I was like, well, I want to charge my phone, but now I don't actually have the wireless charger. Yeah. So that was pretty frustrating to kind of experience. It is. I mean, and no can... wireless Apple CarPlay, that stinks. What and then the Bluetooth interaction interface is just not that great right. either. So it's, it's just it's an old car. I That's will say though that the, um, the sound system, the Mark Levinston in here. The Marky Mark is good. Is really, really good. Yeah. Like better than the EV9 that we have. And that one's supposed to have a really good. Um, the Meridian. Yeah. yeah. The Meridian's okay. Uh, the mark is good. Every Mark Levinson system that we test, I think, is really they good. They crush it. Yeah, no, they do I feel a good like, job. I feel like in terms of pre, um, like premium sound, yeah. I, I think it's in like the top three for sure. Lexus does a great job, yeah. 100%. Um, okay, and the last real thing is, is price. And they upped the price on the IS500 a little bit for this year, but they're pretty similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the IS500 starts at 60K, as tested, we're at 68. The uh, M340i, and obviously the new car, not my car, but the new car starts at 59.6 for X drive, so within $400, but you get all wheel drive. It's two grand less for rear wheel drive, so you are gonna save money on the BMW. But once you start specking things out, it gets to a point where like there's really no difference. Yeah. The difference just becomes turbo and all wheel drive, more sporty oriented versus durability, longevity, simplicity, Lux and, and then luxury. Yeah. So that then poses a good question of which one you would have. Which is like interesting now that I'm like thinking through how we just answered all of this. Yeah. I feel like the Lexus won and basically- it won a lot of categories. Yeah, basically a majority of the categories. But I still think me personally, and I don't think there's a wrong answer. I really think no. it comes down to personal preference. You're getting a fantastic these, car either way. Yeah, these are two really great cars. Um, I still think I'd pick the M340i mainly because I want something that's a bit more nimble, more aggressive. Um, I like I like torque more than horsepower, meaning I like it to feel quicker. Yeah, oh, especially I, around town. Like we're not always on track. Yeah, you know? and I think you you experience that in the M340i. It's more available power. Yeah. Um, and I think you can get the, like, your exhaust sounds really good. It doesn't sound as good as a V8, but to me, I think, like, that's a, that's a trade-off I'd be willing to make. But, yeah. like, what you get here is a really good package. Like, if you want comfort with a V8 noise and, like, styling that is incredible, mm -hmm. like, you're you're not going to make, you're not going to be disappointed with, no, with the Lexus. No, that, that is a great luxury car that just happens to be really quick, sound good, and be pretty good on a track. Yeah. So, I think... And it's, it's kind of funny bringing up this topic, and, and you mentioned it when you first started saying your response, but like when we did this video with the M340 and your G70, I got a comment this week. Somebody was like, well, the G70 sounded like it won a bunch of categories, and then you both chose the M340. And I had to like then explain, like, look, everyone's experience is different. Everyone, like what you're looking for in a car is different. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a luxury experience, Lexus. If yeah. you're looking for like a more aggressive sporting experience, BMW. Yeah. And I think I want it. That thing is so close to being exactly what I want, but it's just not quite there. And for that reason, I would buy the M340 again. I also think we didn't really touch on the transmission. And yeah, I also think enough. like that is a big reason also why I wouldn't take this. And I think we didn't talk about it in the track portion, mainly because we were in like second gear the whole time around the track. Yeah. You're in third for a little bit. So you don't really experience like how sluggish and honestly bad it is. But <laughs> It is um, nowhere near as nice as the 10-speed in the LC. Yes. Everything about it is just slow, lethargic. And I, I guess the last thing I would say is it's hard to get this car, in my point of view, in the quote-unquote fun zone. Yeah. Like, you really have, you to, have to kind of work, to work at for it. it. Yeah, you and do. like... You have to put in the right mode and you have to have the right throttle response because the um, you have to be at the right rpm the valve the dead. valves only open up at like 2800 rpm or it's 25. higher than that even it's like 3000 3500 yeah so yeah you got to be way up so it's like to get this thing in the zone where it like puts a smile on my face it's a lot harder to do than the m340i instant torque that puts a smile yeah. on my face yeah, like for sure they, they put smile on my faces for different reasons i just think it's a lot harder to kind of do for me in the IS500. I get what you, I totally get what you mean. And that's, there's there's two things. If that were different in this car, I would have bought this, no question. If this had a ZF8 speed. If this, well, even if it had the 10 speed from the LC, and if it sounded like the LC, 
Yeah. I wouldn't have thought even about getting anything else. I would have just bought that and not even looked at anything else because that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for sound and I'm looking for snap and you get both of those things in the LC500. Yeah. And then this would have been a four door, you know, practical LC500. I would have been the happiest boy alive. <laughs> it's so close to being that. I know. It's, it's so close. It's just the trans. Yeah. It's just the trans. Yep. But anyway, still great car. Yeah. I think we had a great uh, great week with it. So thank you to Lexus for letting us have a go. Thank you to you for watching. Of course, if you haven't yet, make sure you watch our best in the rest video on this car and stay tuned for more stuff around track and maybe even drag stuff with the M340 versus the G70. Yes, I'm looking forward to that too. We'll see you then. Take care.